When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. Might have remembered how it's actually named, for example, your alkanes. Your alkanes are named by having its prefix, which is just number of carbons. So these here, these here refer to number of carbons. And that's why I wrote 1, 2, 3, because that refers to number of carbons. So for example, if it has one carbon, it's called meth. The second part is a an part. That refers to it being straight chained. If it were en, like ethene, that means it had a double bond, but it's, but alkanes are straight chained, therefore it's an. And then the suffix, the last part, is in the case of an alkane, it would have an e at the end. That refers to it being an alkane. Right? So methane would be an alkane. On this video, we're actually not going to worry about alkane, so we're not going to be talking about alkane, but we're going to talk about we're going to talk about alkanols and alkanoic acids. Now, these are actually quite similar to alkanes, which is why we went over just how we'd name alkanes beforehand. I'll read the actual dot point. It says identify the IUPAC nomenclature for describing the esters produced by reactions of straight chained alkanoic acids from carbon 1 to carbon 8 and straight chained primary alkanols from carbon 1 to carbon 8. So we need to know how we can actually name alkanols and alkanoic acids from carbon 1 to carbon 8. And then we need to know what happens, what changes to the naming once they've all combined to form an ester. What changes when it comes to nomenclature. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. It's a very simple process for how to name alkanols and alkanoic acids. We have already covered how to name alkanols in the production of materials module. We'll quickly go over that again. It's more or less just the same idea. So we've got how many carbons there is stays the same, meth, eth, prop, but. Then the an part stays the same as well, because there's no double bonds in alkanols, so therefore we have the an. And the only difference is the suffix. In this case, we have a suffix of ol, which makes it an alkanol. So in this case, for example, let's say we have one carbon, we call it meth, an, and then ol. That would be a one carbon alkanol. If we had two carbons, we would call it ethanol, Three carbons would be propanol, four carbons would be butanol. Right? So that's the idea behind it. Just the only difference between naming alkanes and alkanols is the OL part at the end. Now, the alkanoic acids, it's quite similar. The only difference is the last part. It's actually oic acid. Right? So we add that prefix and the suffix, and then we get our naming for alkanoic acids. So, for example, if we have one carbon, we call it meth an noic acid. If there's two carbons, it's eth for two, an for it being straight chained, and oic acid. Four, uh, three, prop for three, an for straight chained, and oic acid for it being an alkanoic acid, and so on and so on. So for this, you should remember these different terms, meth to oct. There's so many dot points that mention this, so you should really be familiar with meth to oct. And then just to add those prefixes in the end, the suffixes, sorry, to distinguish between alkanols and alkanoic acids. But so far we haven't answered that dot point yet because it's talking about what happens when those combine, when an alkanol combines with an alkanoic acid to form an ester. How do we name it then? What do we change? And that's what we talk about here. So first of all, the actual name changes. Now, an alkanoate group is actually an alkanoic acid. If we have a alkanoic acid and, and an alkanol joined together, like they do here. So this is our alkanoic acid, and this is our ethanol. You can see they're attached at that oxygen. So now we don't call them alkanoic acid and alkanols anymore. Now we call the part, which is, con is contributed by the alkanoic acid, we call it the alkanoate group. And the part, which is contributed by the alkanol, we call it the alkyl group. That's really a difference, right? So this was the alkanol group. When they're attached together, we don't call them alkanol and alkanoic acid, we call them alkanoate and alkyl group. Now, when it comes to naming them, you look at the carbons as well. Make sure of your alkanoic acids that you still consider the last carbon, even if it has no hydrogens on it, right? It's the carbon which forms the carbonic acid. Even that carbon counts towards the chain itself. So we should first name find out how many carbons 
are in this actual alkanoate group. So identify the number of carbon atoms that the alkanoic acid contribute. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. So remember this here was our alkanoate group, which is comes from our alkanoic acid. So there's six carbons. That's the first part. And after we've done that, we have to name the alkanoate group. In this case, six refers to hex, that means six. Then we still have the an part, which refers to it being a straight chain. And the only difference is beforehand we had oic acid, right? So it's hexanoic acid, that would have been it by itself. But now we don't call it hexanoic acid anymore, we call it hexano eight. Right? This part refers to an alkanoate group. So now we've named the actual part that comes from the alkanoic acid, it's hexanoate. Now we're going to name the part which comes from the alkanoid group. So, yeah. so I wrote third step, identify the number of carbon atoms that the alkanoid group contribute. In this case it's one, two, three. Right, these three. This here is uh, was our alkanoid. There are three carbons. And that makes it a prop. Prop for three. So it's prop. And then all we actually have to add is a YL. This YL is a suffix which our alkyl groups get. Right? It's propyl. Propyl. So that's what you should know when it comes to changing the nomenclature when they're joined together as a Easter. And we're actually going to cover how Easter's are formed in two videos time. But this is just how we name them. This is just how we name them. So in this case we've got the hexanoate and the propyl. Now what we do is we have to combine them to form our Easter in terms of the name itself. So the fifth step is name the Easter. And here we've got our alcohol, alcohol group comes first. So this comes first in our name and the alkanoate group comes second. So I write propyl Propyl and then hexanoate. Propyl hexanoate. You don't have to put them together, you can, you can have space in between. This is what we name. In this case, this Easter would be called propyl hexanoate. I'll quickly cover again what we need to do. First of all, we need to figure out which part is contributed by our alkanoic acid, which part is contributed by our alkanol. Because remember, in Easter, it's just them two joined together. Once we've identified that, we identify how many carbons each have contributed. In this case, it was six for the alkanoic acid and three for the alkanol group. Then we name them. So we just change around the suffix bit. And that makes, gives us our alkanoic, alkanoate group from our alkanoic acid and our alkyl group from our alkanol. Once we've done that, once we have the actual names, we put our alkyl group first and then we put our alkanoic acid group second. And then we have the actual name for the Easter itself. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.